Chapter 3 White Fang by Jack London Between White Fang and Alice, the master's wife, there existed a secret. Each night after Sierra Vista had gone to bed, she rose and let him in to sleep in the big hall. Each morning early, she slipped down and let him out before the family was awake. On one such night, White Fang awoke and lay very quietly. He smelt the air and read the message it bore of a stranger's presence. To his ears came sounds of movements. White Fang made no outcry. The stranger walked softly, but more softly walked White Fang. He knew the advantage of surprise. The man paused at the foot of the great staircase and listened and White Fang watched and waited. The man began to climb up the steps. White Fang struck giving no warning. He sprang into the air and landed on the man's back. He clung with his forepaws to the man's shoulders, at the same time burying his teeth into the back of the man's neck. He clung on for a moment, long enough to drag the man over backward. Together they crashed to the floor. White Fang leapt clear and, as the man struggled to rise, charged in again. Sierra Vista awoke in alarm. The noise from downstairs was like that of battling beasts. There were revolver shots. There was a great snarling and growling and a smashing and crashing of furniture and glass. Almost as quickly as it had begun, the din died away. The struggle had not lasted more than three minutes. The frightened household gathered at the top of the stairs. Whedon and Judge Scott went down the steps cautiously. In the midst of the smashed furniture, partly on his side, lay a man. Whedon Scott bent over and turned the man's face upward. Jim Hall, said Judge Scott, and father and son looked at each other. He was a notorious criminal whom the judge had sent to prison. Then they turned to White Fang. He too was lying on his side with his eyes closed. The dog lifted his eyelids slightly as they bent over him and made a vain effort to wag his tail. Then his eyelids drooped shut and his whole body flattened out upon the floor. Dawn was breaking through the windows. The veterinary surgeon had been working on White Fang for an hour and a half. One broken hind leg, he said. Three broken ribs. There is a large likelihood of internal injuries. One chance in a thousand is really optimistic. He hasn't a chance in ten thousand. Judge Scott exclaimed. But he mustn't lose any chance that might be of help to him. Whedon, send a message at once to San Francisco for Dr. Nichols. Doctor, you understand? He must have every chance. The surgeon smiled understandingly. <laughs> of course, he deserves all that can be done for him. The strength and energy of the wild was in White Fang's blood and he clung to life. He slept long hours and dreamt much. All the ghosts of the past arose in his mind and were with him. Once again, he lived in the cave with Geesh or ran for his life from the howling dog pack. In his dreams, he lived again his days with Beauty Smith and the dog fights he had fought. At such times, he whimpered and snarled in his sleep. Then came the day when the last bandage was taken off. All Sierra Vista was gathered around. White Fang tried to rise to his feet and after several heroic efforts, at last stood on his four legs, swaying back and forth. Judge Scott said, Just as I stated right along, no mad dog could have done what he did. He's a wolf. A blessed wolf, corrected the judge's wife. He'll have to learn to walk again, said the surgeon. So he might as well start right now. Take him outside. Outside he went like a king with all Sierra Vista about him and tending on him. He was very weak and when he reached the lawn, he lay down and rested for a while. 
Then the procession moved on, little bursts of strength returning to White Fang's muscles as he used them. They reached the stables and there in the doorway lay Collie with half a dozen plump puppies playing about her in the sun. White Fang looked on with wondering eyes. The master helped one puppy towards him. He cocked his ears and watched it curiously. Their noses touched and he felt the warm little tongue on his jaw. White Fang's tongue went out and he licked the puppy's face. The other puppies came crawling towards him and he gravely permitted them to clamber and tumble over him. Their antiques continued and he lay with half-shut eyes, drowsing in the sun. Adapted from White Fang When you care for and love others, you become responsible for their well-being and safety.